Good. All right. So you can see May 2020. I think that was when I, I uh, started creating the slides. And uh, I think Bansley was asking me even before that. So <laughs> apologies for, for the long delay. Uh, a lot of things cropped up in between and, uh, uh, and sort of finally got to, to, to this, uh, this month. And uh, so the slides are nothing much to shout about. And uh, I actually did this, I can't remember when I did this uh, particular hack to build a thermal camera with the Pi. And uh, the whole point about it is it's really more on me trying out this new sensor that I bought uh, on a whim. And I was trying to do something with it. Then the, uh, the COVID thing came about. And uh, I thought, you know, instead of doing that thing that I wanted to do, why don't I build a thermal camera to, to just muck around with it? And uh, so I did. Like, um, I can no longer show you the actual uh, camera because I, I lent it to somebody else. So I, I passed it to uh, one of my colleagues who, who actually wanted to have a hack. And he couldn't actually buy the sensor anymore because uh, it's out of stock in many places. Uh, in fact, a lot of those thermal cameras, uh, hardware and sensors are out of stock everywhere. Uh, let me show you my uh, Pi 4 setup though. So I even have it here now. So that's the picture. And that's the real thing. Right, so this is my Pi 4. Um, I do a lot of stuff with it because I, I uh, like to muck around with the Pi. And, but mostly what I do in it is uh, a lot of software development. I hardly do any hardware stuff. Uh, this is one of the few things that I do uh, with the actual hardware. Um, so most of the time it's just the software stuff. In fact, I, I started off doing this, trying to make the uh, Pi for a development platform for my iPad. So uh, that sort of gradually graduated into other stuff. Anyway, the uh, thermal camera is quite simple. Uh, the, the concept of it is quite simple. So what I do is I, uh, firstly, I read the data from the uh, uh, thermal camera sensor, which is this one, AMG 8833. Um, I convert the data into temperature readings because uh, the data are just numbers. And then from there, I generate thermal images based on the readings. So it's, uh, the, the steps are actually quite simple. It's quite straightforward. Uh, I will go through the steps uh, on this in Go. Uh, by the way, anyone in this call a Go developer? Or mostly what kind of, uh, okay, let me go through the list. Luther, raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Luther is sticking out his tongue at me. I don't know why, but uh, you know, he looks rather old. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's based on Go. And uh, there were some code that were Python um, that's uh, around somewhere. And uh, I, I actually wanted to do the whole thing in Go because you know I, I prefer doing stuff in Go. Uh, so I actually redid the whole software in Go. So I'm going to show that to you guys too later on. Okay, let me get back here. So this is the sensor. Uh, pretty small. And the camera is, is just this guy. Okay, can you see the pointer? Yes. Can. Yeah, we can. Ah, okay. Yeah, so the, the, uh, this one. And um, the legs here are actually, now that I remember it, it was uh, soldered on by, by King Ming. So King Ming very kindly helped me to solder on this. And in fact, he did it on both sides. Uh, I think I asked him to do it on one side. And the reason why I asked him to do it uh, is not that I'm bullying him or anything like that. It's just I couldn't see the thing properly to solder anymore. My eyesight is quite bad. Uh, so I, I asked him very kindly and he soldered both to me. And, uh, and he actually works. I mean, he can actually stand on both ends. Otherwise, it would be lopsided. And uh, so these are the, uh, the different... Uh, inputs to the the sensor, the uh, V in. This is a power pin, right? So this one, this is a power pin. Uh, I connect it to the three point three volt in the Pi four. So this is pin one. Uh, the three point three output, I don't use it. A uh, ground, I connect it to pin nine on the Pi four. Uh, 
then these are the two more important ones, the uh, uh, SCL pin, right, and the SDA pin. Okay, and uh, this connect to pin five as well as uh, pin three, right? So these are the two. Um, the interrupt pin, some people use it to detect movement or changes. Um, I didn't use it at all. So uh, I just read the data and I use software to do the detection. I don't use any of this uh, interrupt to, to do the monitoring. Okay, and uh, this is my uh, hacked up uh, little bit of uh, monstrosity that I DIY from some scrap styrofoam. Okay, um, basically I cut some styrofoam, spare styrofoam that I happen to have on my desk and then uh, I just stuck everything in and I put it on top of my Pi 4. And actually it works pretty well. So uh, I'll show you how it works later on. Um, so for the software, I use this particular package to access the MG uh, sensor. And then I also use a pure Golang image resize package. Right. So there are a few out there in, uh, that's available, but I, I use this particular one. Um, no particular reason. In fact, I tried a few of them and they all work about the same, but this is one of the smaller ones and I wanted my code base to be uh, relatively small. So I just uh, uh, stuck with this one. Okay, so uh, this is the code itself. Uh, and so this, it's relatively simple. So I, I actually have a, a mock-up. Uh, this is a part where I do the, uh, the mock data that's uh, easier for me to do testing and also to do any sort of development. Um, I will show the, the actual uh, mock code. Uh, yeah, my, my actual, my main computer actually uh, conked out this morning and uh, I got a switch to an older MacBook. That's why I can't do virtual backgrounds now. But uh, the, uh, my code, I'm not sure where it is. I only have this right now. So I'm not even sure whether I can show you the code. But anyway, um, so this is a screenshot of the code that I, I built up earlier on. Uh, this to do the mock-up, and this enables me to do development easier. And if I'm not mocking up, then what I do is uh, I connect to the, um, the sensor and I have some settings. I set it to normal mode. I uh, do an uh, initial reset and then I set the uh, frames per second. Okay. And then once I can uh, connect to the uh, uh, sensor, I run a go routine and then I jump on to this uh, particular function. Okay. I set up everything as a, a web server. So this is the part where it is a go simple Go web server. Uh, and this Go web server will continually serve out the images. So it will uh, basically continually uh, pump out the images and then you can view it from a, a browser anywhere that's uh, on the same network. Right, so the uh, start thermal cam here, uh, again, pretty simple. What it does is it will read the pixels from the sensor and then at a uh, certain interval, and this interval is uh, set uh, at the uh, the page itself, at the at the HTML page, uh, at a particular number of milliseconds. So it will just basically uh, loop and refresh. Okay, so that's the uh, and then we we'll keep on doing it, right? It will keep on doing it. And it will not stop. So uh, that's the uh, uh, go routine for starting and reading the uh, pixels and then uh, just pushing it on to this particular variable called grid. And this particular index page, which is the only page that's uh, in the, the software, what it does is it will generate the images using this particular uh, go routine. Again, it will generate a uh, frames and then it will um, it will send the, the information to the, uh, the, the uh, HTML page. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this one itself will be the one that will uh, create a image. And this is in the base 64. 
uh, string. So this is a data uh, uh, string, and then it will send it to the uh, the page. This this will in fact show the uh, the image. This is the the uh, uh, this is uh, the the function that that shows the image. Okay, creating image here. Uh, I create an image and then I sleep and then I will uh, push the image again. So again, it goes infinitely, right? So it doesn't stop. Um, you have to do control C to stop it. Right? Um, to create the e frame from the image, I take the data from the, the buffer, I encode it, and then I create this frame uh, from base 64. I, I uh, make this into a base 64 and then I push it out to, to this guy. Right, so this frame, this frame here, it's, it's basically this frame. Okay, so, um, and then I use a particular uh, color heat map to display image, which is from blue to red, uh, there's 104 values. Right? So I, I didn't show everything here, but uh, basically this is it. The uh, image, um, what it does, it's, it's actually um, not, it's actually quite, quite straightforward. What it does is it will create a RGB uh, image from the sensor. And then from there on, I, I get the uh, uh, R, G, and B, and then I set the pixels. Uh, and after that, I use resize. Remember the, uh, the package I talked about earlier on? I use resize. Uh, and then I use this algorithm, uh, like ZOS3, I think uh, if I pronounce it correctly, and I res resize it to a particular size. Yeah? Um, because the, uh, the sensor itself is quite small, quite small, it's eight by eight. There's only 64 pixels. So if I want to see something clearer, I can't because it's only 64 pixels. So what I do is I use this to uh, approximate and uh, resize it to something larger. And uh, um, I wasn't sure it would work initially, but um, I tried it and actually it works pretty well. And that's how I managed to get the, uh, the image at the end of the day. Okay, and then of course, uh, if I want to, to uh, get the color index, this is it. Uh, this is uh, get the R, G, and B. That's uh, quite straightforward. Um, and this is how, how I do it, right? So uh, it's an image capture of, uh, I use VNC into my uh, Pi 4, and then uh, I, I capture this. Uh, uh, this is the VNC part of it. And this is from the browser. And this is a captured image. Right. So if you think about this, this is originally a 8 by 8, which is 64 pixel image. And uh, it's been extrapolated to look at, look like something. Do you know what this looks like? Do you know what this image is? Anyone want to take a guess? You waving your hand. Yeah, basically I, I, I was sitting a little bit like uh, cross-legged, right? Um, and then I was just raising my hand like this. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, eight by eight pixel, right? And extrapolated this way. So actually it works pretty well. Let me, let me show you, this is uh, from YouTube. This is how, how it looks like uh, at the end of the day. Okay, so you gotta, gotta use a little bit of imagination. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not right, super clear. Um, but basically what happened is, uh, let me just go back to the beginning here. Uh, this detected me coming into a room, sitting down on my armchair, and then I raised my right hand. Yeah, and then I put down my right hand, and then I raised my left hand. Okay, and then uh, I put down my left hand as well. Okay, and uh, I stand up again to uh, leave the room. So, oops, yeah, it's, it's on YouTube. 
Um, so that, that was the image and uh, basically that was the camera. Right? Um, all the source code is, uh, is on GitHub, so I forgot to put the link in here. Uh, but you can capture it, you can uh, catch it on uh, uh, GitHub. I, I will share the link uh, afterwards. I will probably send it to Fuzzly, then you guys can take a look at it. Um, and if you want to see uh, step by step uh, how I actually did this, I also have a blog post where I describe it's like blow by blow. And what I just described earlier on uh, verbally, it's basically what I, I did, uh, what I wrote down on my, um, uh, on my blog. So you can, uh, if, if this particular presentation wasn't as clear, I hope the, the blog will be able to clarify certain things. So anyway, uh, you have questions, please feel free to ask. Great, thank you, Sasheng. Yes, uh, please, uh, any questions? I think there's one from Jiasheng. Jiasheng, you wanna say it yourself or? Yeah, yeah, your Pi 4, you're doing so much processing power, doesn't it overheat? I see it doesn't have a fan on the case. Mine overheated really fast. Ah, let me show this to, to you again. You see this? <laughs> I stuck yeah. uh, this on it and it helps. It helps a lot. So initially it overheated like crazy and I was afraid it was going to like burn a hole into the pie itself. Um, then I stuck this uh, uh, fins on it and I bought it like two bucks, three bucks of, uh, of Shopee and I stuck on it and uh, it helped quite a lot. So it doesn't really heat up too much now. It is still hot, uh, but it is, Okay, um, I also tried using a fan, but the fan was a bit noisy and then it's kind of distracting when I, I was doing, you know, trying to uh, uh, write code. Um, so I, I gave up on that. I just used this. Great. Any other questions? Uh, I'm curious about the distance uh, because the there's no actually optics to to the. To the yeah, there, there's no optics. So, <coughs> what, uh, what kind of distance can it really? Um, I mean, you you were quite far, or how, how far? No, I I wasn't quite far. I think I was like maybe one to two meters away, mm -hmm. uh, in this picture, uh, which which is basically this this right this uh video, uh this video was uh, let me try to do this. Yeah, this video I was uh, sitting maybe like one and a half meters away. Uh, from the camera itself. So the resolution is not very good. Um, and the sensor itself is a very cheap sensor, uh, well, relatively cheap sensor that uh, sort of works. But in reality, if you want to do actual thermal sensing, even though the spec says, yes, it can capture the, the, the temperature, but in reality, it doesn't really work too well if you want to do like uh, real temperature sensing. So I was about to get a um, another sensor. I forget the name now, um, and that was supposed to be a lot more, uh, or not a lot more. Uh, it was supposed to be more accurate because he has more pixels, and it was so loud everywhere. So I never managed to get the other one. I was also at uh, contemplating getting an even more expensive one, like a, a like one hundred hundred over dollar, maybe closer to two hundred dollar. Uh, a sensor and uh, that would have been a lot better i think they have a few hundred uh, pixels but we uh, uh, again yeah, it was it was sold out so uh, I, I couldn't uh, manage I to think get there, there was a kit for the raspberry pi with the i think it's the lepton from FLIR. i think it's like 80 by 60 pixels and, uh, yeah i couldn't one. get it it was sold uh, out uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah everything sold out i even this guy is sold out the mg8833 now is, is, is sold out uh, that's why i have to and in, in terms of, uh, can you calibrate it or do I mean you, you, you get zero to 124? Uh, um, yeah. So, can, can you actually, you know, if, if you have, let's say, uh, I, don't know, uh, I mean, you don't have like a, a black body to really calibrate it, but if you really see yourself, you say, okay, that, that's so much. Can you, uh, how, is the, how is the kind of a real, real temperature with the real color or something? No, the uh, the temperature is not very accurate. Uh, okay. I think it is off by uh, four or five degrees um, from the body temperature because the sensing go, goes like... Uh, and you, you can calibrate it, but you need to use software to calibrate it. There's no hardware calibration. 
um, you can use software and then you can adjust it accordingly. Uh, but the changes are by half a degree Celsius. So uh, in terms of body, actual body temperature sensing is not very useful. Um, because half a degree is, is really not that, that useful and it's not very uh, accurate either. You need to be relatively close before you can actually sense quite well. So I would say um, as the actual thermal camera to do like uh, body temperature sensing, no. That, uh, that practically it, it would not be, uh, it would not work. Uh, I don't think it will work. Maybe, maybe somebody can tune the software even more to do it, but uh, I find it difficult to do it. I think some better hardware might be able to do it, but I, unfortunately, I mean, I, I couldn't actually get any uh, other hardware after after I got this one. You know? um, so that that was that. Uh, there's a there's a there's another one that has a. Let me try to let me try to dig up the uh, the name of the sensor. Just give me a second. I, I didn't know that Panasonic was making those sensors. Panasonic was making those sensors as well. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this is a sensor from Panasonic, apparently from the top. The uh, actual sensor was from Panasonic, but I think a few people uh, sort of made different versions of it and then uh, used it as well. Um, let me try to go and dig out the uh, notes from my from my. Uh, to try is it to... is it the MLX one? Yeah. Give me a second. Uh. <laughs> I I I need to go back now. Refer the notes. Refer the notes. Yeah. Give me a sec. Yeah. Um. So there was another one that I was trying to get that apparently had the uh, better resolution. Uh. Yes, it's the MLX one. MLX nine zero six four zero. Um. And they have a medical. Uh, version, which means that the accuracy was guaranteed up to a certain uh, degree. Uh, again, this all out of stock. The Fleur Lapton one is more than $100. Um, I was also trying to get that, even though originally I, I, I was, uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to spend uh, $100 to get one camera, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, it was, uh, it was also out of stock. So it's, it's kind of hard to, to get. The uh, MLX one is uh, 32 times 24 pixel, so it has 768 data points. So that's uh, it's a lot better, but uh, I couldn't actually get it anymore. The Lepton one, I think they have a different versions uh, as well, and some of the versions were, were pretty good. Um, uh, but the, the prices were a bit exorbitant, that's, that's one. The other one was that uh, it was also out of stock. So the uh, the Lepton was 160 times 120 um, compared to uh, the AMG, which was uh, uh, 8 by 8 compared to the MLX, which is a 32 by 24. So I think the Lepton one could possibly do something uh, much better. Yeah. So what other? do you think such a sensor is good for? <laughs> oh, okay. So um, I originally bought this to uh, do a little bit of uh, detection and automation. Uh, what I wanted to do was um, whenever I, I sat down in my armchair uh, to do uh, Netflix and chill, it will detect my presence because, you know, and it, and it does that pretty well. And then it will turn on the aircon for me, and then uh, turn on the TV, and, and and so on and so forth. Yeah, um, okay. I never actually got to that because I was uh, distracted to do this, and then after that, I was distracted to do something else. So, uh, yeah, I, that is the unfinished project. Nice. So we'll see the finished project soon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, <segment. Too> <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. You know. Well, okay. Uh, is there any other questions? If not, I guess uh, we'll thank Sao Xiong for the interesting talk. Uh, and you. we hope to see his uh, completed project soon. <laughs> Book a slot. <laughs>